And joining us now, as promised, Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. Tom, hello. Uh, good morning. I made it in. Great. This is, this is an early morning. Sorry about that. <laughs> We've been doing this since five. So quit, your, quit your moaning. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about a guy who right now is not moaning because he got away with it. Apparently, you have James Comey not being prosecuted by the Justice Department for leaking classified information by way of the memos he took of conversations with the President of the United States. We know that thanks to a couple of reports, including from Fox News and John Solomon, telling us that the Inspector General actually referred James Comey for prosecution to the Justice Department, and the Justice Department took a pass. What's going on here? Nothing good in my view. Uh, it's extraordinary. I'm not aware of it happening previously where you have a former FBI director or an FBI director at all being referred to the Justice Department for a criminal prosecution. So that's pretty extraordinary. And then the Justice Department takes a pass on it. I don't understand it. Uh, to me, uh, it is uh, a further confirmation that there are two standards of justice in this town. Uh, one for the Clinton gang and one for the Trump world. Well, tell me about what this makes you think of Bill Barr. Because the well, Attorney it, General, the Attorney General has to be involved in a question about prosecuting the former FBI director. It just it seems impossible for him to have been excluded from that conversation. So, but isn't Bill Barr the guy who's supposed to get to the bottom of this? What's going on there? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe they thought it was in a good case, technically, but this is a typical deep state approach, in my view. Uh, the IG likely uh, constructed a very narrow crime um, from which to refer for criminal prosecution, and the DOJ didn't bite, and it was designed to make sure that Attorney General Barr uh, wouldn't bite, and I would have hoped he would have seen through that. I mean, this was an important scandal in the sense that you had President Trump's FBI files properly taken or stored at uh, Comey's house, and he was they were leaked with the express purpose by his own admission, Comey's own admission, of getting a special counsel appointed. And of course his buddy Robert Mueller is the special counsel that's appointed as a result of these leaks. So you've got this corrupt formation of the special counsel as a result of these illicit criminal acts and they're not interested in investigating right. or prosecuting. And Mueller, of course, acts. hires a team of Hillary Clinton loyalists and donors and people who attend her victory party and people who work on behalf of her aides who destroyed the very cell phones that Hillary was trafficking and classified information on. I mean, all of that seems like it's worthy of at least an, a little tiny dose of scrutiny. And so the thinking is, and the word that the, the, the DOJ is spinning, well, there may be other big things happening. And I just don't, I just don't see... Uh, that being in the offing if they can't think they can make a case for uh, this uh, 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 illegal leaking by Comey. And you know, it isn't just illegal leaking of classified information. You hear the Justice Department talking about they can't prove intent by Comey. Well, that's A, not the law. This is the Hillary thing all over again, where Comey came up with this idea that, well, because we can't prove intent, which they could have, they uh, they couldn't go after her. Uh, look, there is no in there is no intent part of the statute about the mishandling classified information. Just think if there were. Well, you could have people walking out the door every day with classified information. Well, I didn't intend to make it available on the internet equivalent of a park bench. Or when I leaked it to my lawyer, well, I didn't know there might have been classified information in there. Even though Comey, as the head of the FBI, is supposed to know everything that's classified or not, whether it's marked or not. It, it, this to me is um, a, a deep state special and it's a shame Barr signed on to it. Meanwhile, while all of this is going on, your organization, Judicial Watch, has these new court do documents showing that investigators went to Comey's home to retrieve these memos and apparently there's another secret memo that no one knew about. What is going on here? Yeah, he's writing memos. Uh, they, they're asking him about the memos. They go to him a month after he's fired, and they start interviewing him about memos. And during the interview, he says, well, I have these other memos. And by the way, there are two others that I wrote that evidently you don't have. He didn't tell them, by the way, in the course of that interview, it looks like, that, they, uh, that he had been leaking this information and sending it along to other people which is one of the reasons the IG talks about, reportedly, about lack of candor by Comey. So it isn't just leaking classified information, it's misleading investigators as well. Well, it's another word. Obstruction I mean, we, of justice, it's not just leaking, it's obstruction of justice, perjury, things like that, 
false statements to the agents. Well, to the FBI, that's right, false statements. That's the key. To the FBI, lack of candor is the is lying to the FBI. And I, we've seen what happens to people who lie to the FBI who have anything to do with Trump world. And it shows you the importance of Judicial Watch's efforts, Amber, because you know these are the sorts of documents that make it harder for the Justice Department not to do anything. And I'm hoping the Attorney General rethinks this in light of the strong public reaction against it. We're talking about scrutiny for James Comey, and apparently he's avoiding it. <laughs> the IG the IG scrutinizes him, refers him for criminal prosecution to the Justice Department. The Justice Department says no. This is all thanks to reports we got from John Solomon and Fox News. And so we should be seeing some of this soon in the IG report. Mark Meadows suggested last night that James Comey was being silent in the face of all of this, and this should tell you something. The truth is coming, he says. The verdict won't be pretty, Mark Meadows says. And then James Comey tweeted this last night. I love transparency. I just wait for facts before I talk about them. I'm confident the results of all IG reports will show honest public servants worked hard to protect this country from a threat this president and his enablers won't acknowledge. And at me next time, bruh. <laughs> and when I said bruh, that was not a mispronunciation of what James Comey wrote. He wrote B-R-U-H like a child on Twitter. What? the hell is going on, Tom Fitton? <laughs> well, that's a guy who uh, got a got a jail free card from his former colleagues at the Justice Department. And, uh, you know, however problematic it is that the Justice Department didn't prosecute him, it's it's uh, certainly, uh, if when the IG report is released, which will really excoriate him, again, it ties up the Mueller investigation to this corruption by Comey. So whenever you see stuff like this from Comey, this arrogance mm. uh, and dishonesty, he does obviously doesn't love transparency. He was misleading the president of the United States in the Russia investigation. Remember that. Yeah. Oh, I'm not investigating you. I'm not investigating you. I'm not investigating you. In fact, he was spying on him. On Monday, you've got some new information coming out. You've been hassling the government, and rightfully so for a lot of stuff. And when I say hassling, you mean just like suing the pants off of these guys right. until judges finally side with you. They're like, yeah, give them the documents. What documents are you getting Monday? Well, these are the FBI interview reports with the infamous Bruce Orr, the DOJ official whose wife worked for uh, the Clinton DNC uh, hired Fusion GPS. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Orr was the conduit to get information from the Clinton spy, Christopher Steele, into the FBI. The FBI cut Steele off because he was a leaker. Right. They cut him off from paying him. The FBI was actually paying Christopher Steele. So Steele lied to the FBI about his media leaks. They can him. They're like, you're done. You can't yeah. do this. But they keep communicating to with him through Bruce Orr. Yes, and there's a series of FBI interview reports discussing what Bruce Orr was learning and getting from the Clinton spy network, both in late 2016 and early 2017. We've asked for those reports. Congress is desperate to see them all. They need to be declassified and released. The government's been playing games with us for well over a year now, or almost, yeah, well over a year. And now we'll be getting them on Monday. So uh, this shows the corruption behind the desperate effort to get Trump, that the FBI was using this cutout, Bruce Orr, who was conflicted because his wife worked with Chris Steele uh, to get dirt on Trump. Uh, the spying against Trump didn't stop with the his election, that's for sure. I think one of the looming questions over this too is what does all of this mean for declassification because we see the DOJ declining to prosecute, we wonder what exactly Bill Barr's role in this was. He's in charge of declassification per the president. Can we still expect these documents to come out in a timely manner? I think we'll get the documents but not in a timely manner. I mean we've already been waiting uh, a few years for them. Sure. Uh, I think the Attorney General is probably focused on this more uh, now than previously, um, and they will be de releasing documents. You know, all the indications are more materials coming. We know we're getting it in our lawsuits. But on the other hand, we're in a knockdown, drag out battle with the FBI, who has all these Peter, uh, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page documents. Uh, the corrupt FBI officials, the lovers, remember them? Mm -hmm. They have materials, 13,000 pages. They want to take over two years to release them. Yeah, it only took, what, like two decades for us to get Soviet Union files released? Maybe <laughs> maybe at some point we'll get these documents released about how they spied on the current president of the United States. Unbelievable stuff. Tom Fitton, thanks for staying on top of it. You're doing a good thing. You're welcome.